for me, I guess the first time that I ever really dealt with mental health was as a teenager during, um, I, actually, I didn't know I was going through it when I was rebelling and just freaking out and I didn't understand. Now that I'm older, I realize a lot of people just go through those teenagers and feel that. But the first time that it was dark, dark, dark was when I first dealt with heartbreak. Um, the thing that you got to understand for kids, especially the first time you go through it, you think that you're the first person in the world this has happened to. The first time you get heartbroken, you think that there's no cure because you don't know a pain like that. You don't know a pain. You, you know bleeding, you know getting punched, you know physical. But the first time you feel that when someone's like reaching into your heart and you feel like the sun is gone, that's intense. I remember that and I remember feeling like everyone who cared about me was outside of this hole, telling me that everybody goes through it and that I'd find a way out and that it's normal. But when you're down there and everyone's in the sun, you just think all oh, these people are just saying this because they love me, I'm fucked. I'm stuck. And like I said, I was fortunate enough to have parents that recognized it. I was fortunate enough to have a music teacher at school that understood I couldn't be in class because I'd be crying. And he'd let me stay in the side classroom, like the, this little room in the corner of the music room with, that had a piano. And he would just let me go there. So music helped me. Teachers helped me. Family helped me. And I know that a lot of people don't have that, you know? A lot of people don't have those people that are looking out to make it a priority. And I didn't even know how to fix it. I didn't even know how to cope. I didn't know how to deal. Um, that was the first time I really encountered it. That's the first time I ever talked to a therapist and like the first time I ever had to approach fixing a problem I couldn't see. I think that it's really important to make it a priority in the country because I know that I'm fortunate and a minority to have that many people care. Because oftentimes when people are in those situations, they feel and are alone and there's nobody advocating, there's nobody reaching out a hand to say, yo, I got you, or I'll help you, or I've been through it. I was fortunate. I was fortunate. When I talk about being in that hole and feeling like family's on the outside because everyone's telling me that it's curable and they've been through it and all this, I remember hearing Amy Winehouse for the first time. And it was like I instantly had a friend beside me because I could hear the pain presently in her voice that just mirrored mine. I couldn't hear it in anybody around me, but I could hear it in her. So it, it helped to not feel alone. And Bob Marley for the exact opposite reason because Bob was like, it was hard to be sad when I'd hear it. It was hard to feel sad when I'd hear it. When I'd hear it. Mm. When I make music, it doesn't necessarily help me feel better. What's the what's the line? An idol, an idol mine is the devil's playground. I'd rather be writing songs than crying. So that's how it helps me. If I'm hella sad, if I'm hella dark, at least I'm forcing myself to do something productive, and then that in turn makes me feel better because I'm actually like. Um, pointing it towards or like using it as gasoline or doing something productive that I can make something out of it. You know what I mean? And after the fact, then it sort of feels better. It's not like it cures it. I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that I make a song and just feel better because it's not how it works. But at the very least, I'm busy. So at least there's less tears because I don't want to fuck up the paper. And, um, and after the fact, when you can sit back and almost see your pain, it's almost like you can make something that you couldn't tangible make something beautiful out of something great. Yeah, and even if it's ugly, at least you could at least you could start to like c characterize it. At least you could start to assess it cuz sometimes there's shit that I'll write in songs that looks back at me and I'm like, "Oh, fuck, I didn't know I was feeling that way." Mm -hmm. You know? I didn't know that I was I didn't know that it was that deep. I didn't know that I just sometimes songs tell me shit. So, yeah, it's 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 a positive and it's a negative, but the negative is I don't even want to go into the negative. My rock for me is my mom. I have to do my very best not to get emotional right now. My rock for me is my mom. Um, the term unconditional love is just not even enough to encompass the way she is towards me. Um,
there's something that she and, and my father have always told me that also helped me help myself. Because they would always reiterate, if you don't care about yourself, who's going to care about you? And those words I have to remind myself of every day. Especially now, because as great as things are, as much as things look like, as, as great as things look from the outside, it's so busy that I can get swept up and I forget that I'm like, oh, f I'm not a machine or oh, f like these are emotions that are just going to pop out if I don't know how to um, analyze them or digest them. They're going to pop out in a week and it's going to f up. It's going to f everything up. Um, so my mom's been that to me. Um... Sometimes it's not even, sometimes it's just someone to listen. Like, you don't have to have all the answers. My mom doesn't always have all the answers when I'm going off about what pissed me off that day or what pissed me off that week. But sometimes it's just someone to listen and almost, like, validate. A skill that I'm learning and a skill that they've been slowly teaching me throughout the years and I'm finally getting a hold of is, if you don't have that person to validate, you got to be that person. You have to be the one to validate it. You have to be the one because if you don't, there might, like, I, I, I'd love to say that there's always going to be somebody, but some days there might not be, dude. Some days there, you just might be on your own, but you got to kind of own that. You got to kind of own that. And if and if you need tools, there's tools out there. And one of the tools is, like, affirmations. Affirmations will teach you how to, how to love yourself. Talking to yourself in the mirror, writing down your thoughts, like, those things that actually make your mental health a priority for yourself because you might not always have someone to be that rock. If you're lucky enough to have it, then dope. But if you're not, you be your own rock. You can do it. You have the capabilities to do it. You just need the tools, and tools exist. Google it. It's out there. Go to jack.org. It's there. You just go to different places, and you can find it. And then it's on you to apply it.